Greetings fellow Whovians and welcome to Tiny Wine Review. Later on this week there will be a Doctor Who news announcement on the children's BBC programme Blue Peter. Now just in case you don't know what Blue Peter is, it's a television children's programme, a kind of a mixture of sort of factual entertainment magazine with lots of different competitions and appeals and how to make things. Uh, it first started on BBC One in October 1958 and it's still going strong to this day. It is the longest running children's television program in the world. That is absolutely astonishing. And what's even more amazing is that Doctor Who has made regular appearances on this show. So I thought for this video, I thought I'd take a look at some of the, the random clips from the history of Blue Peter that featured Doctor Who and sort of talk about what is my best moment. So sit back, relax, Hit the subscribe button. This is the best moments when Doctor Who was on Blue Peter. Let's start off with one of the earliest features of Doctor Who on Blue Peter, where presenter Valerie Singleton told the whole nation, or at least people who were watching, how to make a Dalek cake. Uh, this was back in 1964. And in 1966, there was a little clip, which I'm sure is like a bonus feature somewhere on DVD, on one of the Doctor Who DVDs, where the Daleks actually came and uh, reviewed this cake, as well as some sandwiches or a Dalek Swiss roll uh, and this little tea set as well. And one of the Daleks saying that's got too much chocolate on it. So a bit bizarre, but uh, it just kind of showed the ingenuity of this program of you know, doing little factual information as well as competitions and also design random things such as a Dalek cake. Throughout their show's respective histories, Doctor Who and Blue Peter have intertwined in various different ways. Big example is Ace having her own Blue Peter badge. Now, this is owned by actress Sophie Aldred, who apparently has written to Blue Peter, which uh, automatically gave her a badge as well. If you enter a competition, you get a badge as well. Uh, and in that sort of weird ruling, she was allowed to wear this badge as part of the character of Ace's costume and, and the jacket with the multiple badges. And uh, that's pretty cool, really, to be fair. And sort of researching into Blue Peter, it's, you know, it, it pays dividends to, to write to Blue Peter. You know, yet you, you do get a badge which entitles you to enter various uh, UK um, museums or theme parks or outdoor uh, areas for free. Uh, that's, that's a no-brainer, really, uh, doing that. So uh, I'll put a link in the description below for uh, if you wanted to have a look on the Blue Peter website, uh, the official Blue Peter website, for more details. But there has been other ways that um, Blue Peter presenters, past presenters, have made appearances in Doctor Who or the spin-off Sarah Jane Adventure. So, for example, Connie Hook has made an appearance in the Sarah Jane Adventure, The Invasion of the Bane. Uh, Matt Baker made a brief appearance, I believe, in Aliens of London. But the most notable one uh, out of the Blue Peter presenters has got to be Peter Purvis, who started off... Um, before being a Blue Peter presenter, as the first Doctor companion, Stephen Taylor. A clip that I did watch with Peter Purvis as the presenter was a little factual segment that he was doing to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Doctor Who. Now, what I found a little bit fascinating from this clip is that they used more or less the same uh, auto cue scripting for when they were celebrating randomly the 17th anniversary of Doctor Who. They were pretty much, more or less, word for word, using the same um, uh, information uh, that, there were, that Peter Purvis said. I think John Noakes said it for the 17th. Could be wrong, not a Blue Peter buff. Uh, but using the exact same clips and the, the whole sort of segment. So they basically repeated it seven years later, which I thought was a little bit lazy and just a little bit weird that they did that. It must have been a very slow news day in the Blue Peter office. Moving on to some more memorable moments, though, and it doesn't get more memorable than John Pertwee, the third Doctor, driving into the Blue Peter studios with his very own Hoomobile. Now, this was a big sort of silvery, uh, looks like a hovercraft, but actually a legally 
driven or drivable car um, on three wheels. And this was again Peter Purvis was was with John Pertwee uh, talking about this uh, great new car, uh, one for the future, which didn't surprisingly take off. <laughs> no, it was yeah, it's it's definitely a feat uh, of of engineering. Um, but how practical it is, I have no idea. But um, yeah, it was a legally drivable car. Um, that apparently was, uh, even though it's got three wheels, a three wheel car, uh, that could go up to speeds of a hundred miles per hour. Now, I don't know how, uh, if maybe John was just exaggerating just a tad on that one, but that's what he was boasting that he could do. Um, he did, uh, according to his son, Sean Pertwee, he did drive that around with him and his son in the car to supermarkets, just staring back and things. And it did obviously make an appearance in Doctor Who, very much notably, uh, the invasion of the dinosaurs. And of course, John Pertwee, uh, John Pertwee's final story as a third doctor, Planet of the Spiders, where it flew. So if you haven't seen those clips before, do check them out. Most of the uh, memorable moments from Doctor Who uh, on Blue Peter, the, the clips I'm talking about, you can find quite easily on YouTube, as well as some Easter eggs on various DVDs and Doctor Who Blu-rays. Another big moment was a segment that Blue Peter did with the return of Doctor Who in 2005. Now, uh, this was quite a, a more important, you know, definitely an important segment with the show making its long awaited return back onto the screens. And just before I go into that, personally, I wasn't like a big Blue Peter fan, never consciously watched the show when I was growing up. Um, when I was growing up, it was in the 90s. And I wasn't a big fan of the presenting styles. It, it got a bit sort of too kiddified, for, in my opinion, on that one. There was a clip that I did watch where it was back in 1999, where there was sort of just doing a bit of a, a revival for Doctor Who. And they, the Blue Peter decided to do a segment on that. But it was a little bit cheesy for my taste. You had the presenters, Katie Hill, Connie Hook, uh, Simon Miles, I think his name was. I do apologise. Coming out in like various Doctor Who costumes. It just looked a bit cheesy. Uh, sort of telling about all the various monsters. At least they got the facts right. They didn't make, make them all, you know, uh, pronounce them wrong. So they did a good job with the material that they got. But it was a little bit cheesy. However, this clip from um, this segment that I watched uh, that was from 2005, making its Doctor Who making its grand return was very different. Um, it, it made it, you know, it took it a bit more seriously. Uh, maybe because they got Christopher Eccleston on the on the sofa, the Blue Peter sofa, to do a little interview. Um, and yeah, he was he was brilliant on there. He he really was. Um, you know, he didn't you know didn't take himself overly seriously. Enjoyed his time on on there from the clip that I watched. And uh, there was also talking about the first uh, few episodes of series one of Modern Doctor Who, as well as uh, Matt Baker doing a sort of backstage interview segment with Billy Piper on the set of Dalek. And yeah, like I said, it was quite a big moment and they did use quite a lot of clips for the upcoming uh, Doctor Who um, series one, episode one, Rose. Lots of clips there before the uh, programme was actually first broadcast on Saturday night in 2005. One of the most important moments in Doctor Who's near 60 year history has got to be the very first regeneration scene where William Hartnell regenerated into Patrick Charlton, the first Doctor regenerating into the second Doctor. Uh, and that happened at the very end of part four of the 10th planet. Now, thanks to Blue Peter, that's the only reason why that actual clip of that first regeneration exists. As we know, part four of the 10th planet is no longer available at the moment, uh, but that clip survived. And that was the, the only reason that clip survived was because it was used on Blue Peter. Thanks to Blue Peter, we have now got, uh, you know, kept in the BBC archives, that very famous first regeneration. One of the things Blue Peter is most famous for are their appeals. Over the last 65 year history of Blue Peter, they have done many appeals to the public, 
mainly for fundraising or charitable reasons like the big blue peter appeals um but uh, they do do random other appeals as well to the general public and that happened in 1973 where two dalek props from doctor who went missing so there was some actual daleks making an appearance on blue peter uh, to make an appeal to find these props and uh, bring them back to the bbc uh, where they rightfully belonged and later in 1973 they did find those props uh, safe and sound I think one was slightly damaged but uh, repairable and yes they, they did find those props. Blue Peter also did a Doctor Who related appeal in 2006 where they asked their children to raid their mums and dads attics just in case they might have a film or copies of some missing Doctor Who episodes from the 60s. As many Whovians will know, there are still episodes missing from the William Hartnell, Patrick Troughton eras, and uh, because the BBC was very short-minded at that time. Um, but obviously they are coming back in drips and drabs, you know, uh, most notably over the last few years, The Web of Fear and The Enemy of the World, the two Second Doctor episode stories, uh, they've made an appearance. And in this particular appeal from Blue Peter back in 2006, they said that uh, anyone who's got these copies can keep them with, the, you know, if, if it's got the original negatives can keep it. The BBC just wanted to uh, clean it up and make their own copies but uh, if you do have that the child will also get a life-size Dalek and I thought what a competition so let me know in the comments if you did actually ask your mum and dad can I check out the attic you might have some missing Doctor Who episodes uh, that, that was just I really liked that sort of uh, bargaining chip for this appeal. Blue Peter are also synonymous for its competitions. Uh, most notably for me, there was two that stand out in my opinion. Uh, one that I've covered in my Love and Monsters review, where the Blue Peter competition winner for designing a new monster for Doctor Who uh, got to have their monster used in that particular episode, and that was, of course, the Absorbaloff. But there was also another competition that you might not have remembered back uh, for the Matt Smith uh, episode, The Doctor's Wife. Competition winner Susanna Lee won the uh, won the competition for designing a TARDIS console. And so much so that they actually used that console in the episode of The Doctor's Wife. It was the junk console that uh, the TARDIS and the Doctor was using to get back to the original TARDIS. Uh, that, uh, that competition winner was uh, got it all designed, managed to meet Matt Smith, got the orange blue Peter badge for being a competition winner as well. And so much so that uh, they even made a toy out of it. And I've still got this toy as well to, my, uh, to this present day of the junkyard TARDIS console. And that, you know, I thought that was really cool. It was a really good competition to do. And yeah, congratulations, Susanna Lee, for um, for bringing that design and for the Doctor Who team to bring that competition design to life. So, you know, if anyone knows Susanna Lee, uh, I salute you and come say hi on the channel. As I said earlier in this video, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't a big Blue Peter fan, never really watched it as a child, never consciously decided I'm going to watch an episode of Blue Peter. It just really wasn't my thing when I was growing up. But I've got to appreciate how much uh, Blue Peter and Doctor Who kind of intertwined and went hand in hand with uh, various interviews uh, from various actors. Sylvester McCoy, Colin Baker, David Tennant's made an appearance. Christopher Eccleston, as I also mentioned. And uh, as I mentioned from all these video, you know, in, in this video, the competitions, the appeals, the, uh, the little... Uh, story, little um, factual segments uh, to talk about Doctor Who and just keep it in children's imaginations and children's public eye when it wasn't at its popularity during the wilderness years. Again, uh, the, the video that I mentioned about uh, the, the segment from 1999 uh, where they was talking about Doctor Who and they had their own Blue Peter Cyber Cafe uh, talking about all the uh, BBC websites with all the Doctor Who facts on there. And it was just, it's important to keep that going. And, you know, I'm, I'm, might be getting soft in my old age, but I'm quite actually proud that Blue Peter is still 
still going to this day. I didn't even know it was going until I found out that there was going to do a uh, news announcement later this week. So yeah, I I'm really glad. And I think it was something that was worth celebrating as part of Doctor Who's 60th anniversary year. Let me know in the comments below if you watched any of the Doctor Who segments that was featured in Blue Peter over the years. Do you still watch Blue Peter now as a young fan of Doctor Who? And are you have you ever entered any of the Doctor Who related Blue Peter competitions? Also, are you looking forward to the Blue Peter Doctor Who news announcement that will be taking place on Blue Peter later this week? Have you got any ideas what it could be? Could it be another competition perhaps? Let me know in those comments. Thank you very much for watching. I really did enjoy watching all these Doctor Who related clips on Blue Peter, going back and watching those. I found it really fascinating and I hope you did too. If you did, please like, share and subscribe. Say hello and come follow me on Twitter at ReviewTimey and do check out my other fantastic Doctor Who content on the Timey Wimey Review page on TikTok and of course right here on the Timey Wimey Review YouTube channel. And as the good doctor once said, Follow that TARDIS.